very old engines. Pardon me. R um, written by Wilbert Audrey. Illustrated by Gunver and Peter Edwards. Dear friends, 100 years ago when Scarloe and Reneus first arrived on their railway, they were young and silly. Scarloe was, Scarloe was sulky and bouncy. He and Reneus quarrelled, but they learned sense, and the owner has just given them a lovely 100th birthday. Talalim and Dolgoth of Toyin are 102. How about going to wish them many happy returns? And that's by the author himself, the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. Crosspatch. Scarloe made a face. Not again, Nancy, please. Just a teeny polish, she coaxed. You must look nice for your 100th birthday. I am nice. You're just a fosspot. And you're a horrid old crosspatch. Nancy polished him vigorously. Scarloe smiled. Nancy, he said. I really was a cross patch once. Shall I tell you? Yes, please. Well, come down. I can't tell you properly why you're fussing up there. Just five minutes then, no longer. Nancy sat down on a box, and the old engine began. Talalin, Dolgoth, Reneus and I were built to gather in England. Who? asked Nancy. Ah, Talalin and Dolgoth. Talalin is my twin. Dolgoth is Reneus's. Their railway at Toyin in Wales. Is a toy in Wales, and there are one hundred too. They were green, and we were red. Talalin and I have four wheels then, and no cab. We thought we were wonderful and talked about how splendid we'd look pulling coaches. What about trucks? asked Nancy. Scarlowe chuckled. <laughs> We are no use for them, he said. I was finished first and sent away on the, on a ship. I didn't like that. It wobbled dreadfully. At the port, the big railway kept me waiting. They had no cranes, they had no cranes to lift me out. It wasn't the Fat Controller's Railway then. He would have managed much better. What did they do? asked Nancy. They used the ship's derricks. They nearly turned me upside down, said Scarlowe indignantly, and left me hanging while, I, while they arranged the truck. You must have looked funny, gurgled Nancy. Yes, and I felt it too. I got crosser and crosser. They fastened me to the truck at last. And an engine took me away. His name was Neil. He was ugly but kind. And we were soon friends. 
left off. You're bound for the re will for the re for the wee railway, he said. You must put some order into the, into those trucks. The others they make you'd hardly believe. I didn't like the sound of that, but I was too tired to say anything. Plenty of people were waiting when we got there, but they weren't used to engines, and it was dark before I was on the, on my rails. Then they left me lonely and unhappy, and wishing Renias would come. Trucks were everywhere next morning. Suddenly, with a rattle and a roar, a train of loaded ones came in. I was surprised. There's no engine, I said. A workman laughed. They've come down by gravity, he said. The empty ones need pulling up, though. That's why you're that's why you've come. But can't they go up by grava whatever it was you said? Gravity only brings things down. We need horses or engines like you to pull them up. What? Have I to pull trucks? Of course. I won't. I want coaches. He just laughed and walked away. Soon, Mr. Matt, the manager, arrived with some men. He showed them my parts from a book. We're going to steam you, Scarlowy, he said. Can I pull coaches, sir? No, certainly not. I gave him such a look. They didn't understand engines, so it was easy. My fire wouldn't burn, and I made no steam. I just blew smoke at them. They called me bad names, but I didn't care. Next day they tried again, and the next, and the next. I just gave them my look, and wouldn't do a thing. At last, the manager said, Very well, be a cross patch. But we're not going to look at your sulky face all day. We'll cover you up and leave you till you're a better engine. They did too, <laughs> chuckled Scarlowy. They fetched a big tarpaulin and covered me right up. I didn't like that at all. I think it served you right, said Nancy severely. Never mind her, Scarlowy. Please tell us what happened next. Nancy turned in surprise. A group of people had quietly come up to listen while Scarlowy was telling, the, telling her his story. <laughs> 